Cambridge IGCSC paper 6 it is specimen paper for examination from 2023 question number one a student investigates the date of reaction between magnesium ribbon and excess dilute hydrochloric acid by measuring the volume of gas produced here is the apparatus shown some of the apparatus is labeled while some is not so let's label the rest of the apparatus here is bunk then there is a delivery tube that is carrying gas to this measuring cylinder here we have a trough that contains water and this apparatus labeled as y is measuring cylinder and this one you know is conical flask conical flask okay so let's see what are the questions name the items of apparatus labeled x and y i hope you know about this apparatus if you have studied well chapter number 12 experimental chemistry in your syllabus then b part the gas made is hydrogen okay describe how the uh, student can test that gas is hydrogen so the test for hydrogen gas is to use lighted splint and the result of this test is squeaky pop there is nothing to explain in this uh, then there is a graph and this graph is showing the results of two experiments so here you can see in experiment one the volume of hydrogen gas collected is 80 centimeter cube and in experiment number two the volume of gas collected is 40 centimeter cube part c use figure to determine the volume of gas we have already determined this then use your answer in c1 to suggest what the student changed in experiment number two okay uh, we know hcl is in excess so if the volume of gas produced in experiment 2 is reduced to half that is due to the mass of magnesium so basically the change is half the mass of magnesium has been used in experiment number 2 why are we saying half the mass because the volume has been reduced to half on fig 1.2 sketch the curve expected if experiment 1 is repeated using magnesium powder instead of magnesium ribbon all other conditions remains the same now in experiment number 1 we are making one change we have to use magnesium powder it means its surface area will increase and when there is more surface area the rate of reaction will increase all other conditions are same it means the volume of hydrogen gas produced will still remain the same back to graph look at this so you have to draw a new curve like this so the gradient or slope of this curve will be steeper than the previous one but you should end this curve at the same level why because there will be no change in volume of gas produced only the rate of reaction will increase question number two a student investigates the reaction between dilute hydrochloric acid and two different aqueous solutions of sodium hydroxide labeled solution a and solution b so here we have acid and two different solutions of sodium hydroxide uh, the experiment carried out here is titration experiment I hope you are familiar with the procedure for titration he is taking hydrochloric acid in burette and then he is taking solution a that is sodium hydroxide solution in measuring flask indicator thymolthaline is added here uh, swells the flask while adding the acid until the solution just changes color okay then he performs experiment number two the student empties and rinses the conical flask with distilled water to remove any impurity or any substance that is left in the flask uh, then he repeats experiment number one using solution b instead of solution a the rest of the things are same okay a part use fig 
to record the readings for experiment 1 and 2 in table 2.1 and complete table 2.1 okay so this reading here is 4.1 and final reading is 29.5 and for experiment number 2 initial reading is 16.4 and the final reading is 29.1 uh, then there is a table and we have to complete this one so all the values uh, we have clearly mentioned so just take the difference for these values for experiment number one the difference in initial and final reading is 25.4 and for experiment number two the difference is 12.7 this is for four marks one mark is for writing correct initial and final readings for experiment number one and one mark is for correct values for experiment number two uh, one mark is for writing both these differences correct and one mark is for uh, writing the accurate reading up to one decimal point at least b part state the color change observed in experiment number one okay in this experiment we are using thymolthaline and we are adding this indicator in flask that contains an alkali solution a or solution b so you have studied the color of thymolthaline is blue in alkali and when hcl is added to this in acidic media the color of this indicator changes to colorless c part uh, which solution of sodium hydroxide solution a or solution b is more concentrated explain your answer so basically in both of the experiments the concentration of HCl is same so if we want to know which of the two solutions A and B is more concentrated so we have to look at the volume of HCl used greater the volume of HCl used to neutralize the solution in titration flask the more concentrated it will be so as you can see from the results uh, the volume of acid used in case of solution A is double the volume of solution used in uh, solution B so we can clearly say the solution A is more concentrated and why because greater volume of acid is used in this case reduce the simplest whole number ratio of concentration of solution A and concentration of solution we have already talked about this the volume used for solution A is exactly double the volume of acid used for solution B so we can say that solution a is two times uh, more concentrated than solution b uh, next is d part and what does it say state the volume of hydrochloric acid needed if experiment one is repeated using 10 cubic centimeter of solution a okay the volume of hydrochloric acid that we noted on burette in case of experiment one is 25.4 and at that time we were using 25 cubic centimeter of solution a in the flask now question is if you take 10 cubic centimeter instead of 25 cubic centimeter for solution a what will be the volume of hydrochloric acid use so simply cross multiply this 25.4 cross 10 and divide it upon 25 it will give you the value for this x it's 10.16 or round it off to 10.2 centimeter cube so this should be the volume of acid used if you take 10 ml instead of 20 ml for solution a e part in experiment 2 the conical flask is rinsed with distilled water suggest why the conical flask is rinsed with distilled water so after performing one experiment it is important to rinse it with distilled water so if there is any substance left uh, that can be removed so to remove the substances left from experiment number uh, one and second part of this is conical flask is not dried after it is rinsed with distilled water so there is no problem with that because if some drops of water left there they will not change the amount of sodium hydroxide that we are using in experiment number two so you have to write uh, there is no need to dry it 
because it will not change the moles or amount of sodium hydroxide used. Uh, next is uh, F part of this question. State the effect, if any, on volume of hydrochloric acid used in experiment 1. If the solution of sodium hydroxide is warmed before adding the dilute hydrochloric acid, give a reason for your answer. Okay. So, uh, the volume of hydrochloric acid used depends on the moles or concentration of sodium hydroxide in the flask. Now, if we heat sodium hydroxide, it is not going to change the moles or amount of sodium hydroxide. So, there will be no change in the volume of acid used. So, you can say there will be no effect on volume. Why? Because temperature has nothing to do with amount of sodium hydroxide present. Temperature only affects the rate or speed of reaction. All right. G part suggests how the a reliability of results from experiment 1 and also experiment number 2 can be confirmed. The only way to check the reliability of results is to repeat the experiment and then compare the results from your repetitions. Suggest a more accurate method of measuring the volume of solution of sodium hydroxide. This is what we discussed in the beginning. Student uh, used measuring, uh, measuring flask to measure the volume of solution. But it would be more accurate to use volumetric pipette or even burette. Because volumetric pipette measures the fixed volume that is required in this case 25 centimeter cube. And also the burette can uh, measure with accuracy of 0.1 centimeter cube uh, instead of the measuring cylinder that is less accurate. After this, there is part H aqueous sodium hydroxide reacts with barium chloride to form a white uh, precipitate of barium hydroxide. So there are two solutions. One is for sodium hydroxide, other is for uh, barium chloride. But once they are added together, uh, we get barium hydroxide that is insoluble in water and it will give white precipitate. You have to use this information and suggest a different method of finding out which of the solutions of sodium hydroxide A or B is more concentrated. So, the method that is explained above uh, uses the titration to determine which is more concentrated. But the information that is provided here uh, is giving us a hint about the method that can also be used to see whether solution A is more concentrated or solution B is more concentrated. What we have to do? We have to take uh, the same volume of solution A and solution B. So, let's say take 25 ml. Why are we taking uh, the same volume of both the solutions? Uh, because we have to compare. So, for a test to be fair, we have to take same volume. Then, what is the method? Add aqueous barium chloride. It will react with solution A, with solution B. And remember, you have to take these two solutions in separate beakers or separate flasks. There will be two experiments in actual. You have to add barium chloride in both of these solutions until no more precipitate forms and you have to measure uh, either the mass of precipitate or volume of aqueous barium chloride. So basically there are two ways by which you can estimate whether solution A is more concentrated or B is more concentrated. One way is uh, just uh, take the precipitates, uh, dry the precipitates and determine the mass. The precipitate uh, that weighs more uh, will be from the solution that is more concentrated. Other way is note the volume of barium chloride that you are using. So more the volume of barium chloride used to precipitate out, more concentrated the solution will be. So one mark is for fail test. You have to write, take same volume or specified volume of solution A and B. This is for one mark. And one mark is about telling the way, uh, about telling the measurement that you will be doing here. So you have to measure mass of precipitate or volume of barium chloride, whatever you like, you may write. And the last one is for writing the conclusion. So I have already explained that. Question number three, a student tests two solids, solid C and solid D. Tests on solid C. Solid C is 
iron to sulfate complete the expected observations okay the student dissolves the solid C in water to form solution C right the student divides solution C into three portions well to first portion the student adds one centimeter cube of dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous silver nitrate so good news about this question is that you will be provided with tables for tests for cations anions and for gases and if you look at the table for tests for anions you will see this test where dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous silver nitrate is used this test is for halidine either chloride bromide or iodide now we know the compound is iron sulfate it means the negative ion here is sulfate ion and the positive ion is iron plus 2 there is no halide ion so the test that is used for halide ion should be negative you can write there will be no change b part to the second portion of solution c the student adds dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous barium nitrate yes this is the test for sulfate ion and sulfate ion is there so it will give us a positive result and result for this test is white precipitates are produced due to formation of barium sulfate c part uh, to third portion of solution c the student add aqueous ammonia drop wise and then in excess for this you have to look test for cations and see the test for iron plus 2 because it is there and iron plus 2 gives green precipitate when aqueous ammonia is added and when this is added in excess the precipitates remain insoluble it does not dissolve uh, next we have some tests on solid D okay look at the tests test 1 uh, do a flame test orange red color so this is uh, the color for calcium ion you will be provided with table uh, flame tests and test 2 to the first portion of solution D add aqueous sodium hydroxide drop wise and then in excess so when you added uh, sodium hydroxide why precipitates are produced if you look at the table for tests for cations you will see why precipitates are produced if there is aluminium ion or zinc ion or calcium ion all these three ions give white precipitate with aqueous sodium hydroxide but when you add sodium hydroxide in excess aluminium or zinc if they are there precipitate dissolves but here observation is telling us there is no further change mean the precipitate remains there it does not dissolve it means calcium ion is there and not zinc or aluminium test 3 to second portion of solution T we are adding dilute nitric acid followed by few drops of aqueous silver nitrate again this is test for halide ion and halide means chloride bromide or iodide and these give different colors for chloride the color is white for bromide it is cream color and for iodide yellow color observation here is white precipitate it means chloride ion is present there so by using these three tests we have confirmed the identity of solid D it is calcium chloride now the question here is describe how to do flame test used in test 1 okay we have studied the procedure of flame test in chapter number 12 experimental chemistry so first you have to take a clean nichrome or platinum wire nichrome or platinum wire is used because it is inert and it has very high melting point then uh, you have to dip this wire into a salt that is to be tested and there are two ways you can either dip the wire into solid salt or you may use uh, the concentrated solution of salt then uh, you have to put this wire along with salt in a roaring Bunsen burner flame uh, obviously it will burn in the flame and some color uh, will be given so the last uh, part of this procedure is you have to observe and record the color of flame in this way uh, we may tell which cation is there e part 
identify solid if we have already identified that by using the three tests the solid is calcium chloride so you can write either the name or you may write the formula for calcium chloride CaCl2 if you just write this formula you will be getting two marks so it depends on you uh, last question question number four and this is a planning question the label on bottle of orange drink states contains no artificial flavors uh, sorry contains no artificial colors a scientist thinks that the orange color in the drink is actually mixture of two artificial colors one is sunset yellow e110 and second is aliora red e129 plan an experiment to show that orange color in the drink does not contain these two artificial colors okay now we know the experimental technique that can be used to analyze a mixture and that separates the components of the mixture that technique is chromatography so basically in this you have to describe the technique of chromatography and we have to use that technique uh, to tell whether this orange color contains these two artificial colors or not okay so let's perform chromatography the first step in chromatography is to take the chromatographic paper and then draw a baseline here it is a blaze baseline a few centimeters above the bottom of the page then you have to place uh, the samples of the mixture and also these two sunset yellow e110 and e129 so here these are two spots uh, you can use uh, let's use the dead spot for this one aliora red and this yellow spot is e110 so let's make it a red color okay the second step in chromatography is take this chromatographic paper and hang it in a beaker <coughs> that beaker contains uh, the suitable solvent and you have to allow this solvent uh, to raise up to this paper and you have to wait uh, for this solvent to rise around 70 to 80 percent of this paper after that remove this paper and the result that is obtained on this paper is called as chromatogram so both the samples this yellow and red one and also uh, the orange drink sample uh, the components uh, present in this will be carried by the solvent and you will see the pattern like this now there are uh, two different cases here so basically you have to compare the spots produced from these two uh, artificial colors like this one and this one you have to compare this with the result for orange drink if the heights for spots of these orange drink is same as those for the two colors then you can conclude that this drink contains the flavors e110 and e129 but here if you look at this chromatogram or you can say if the heights of the spots that you can measure by using the ruler and i hope you know how to calculate the rf value what rf value is you have to measure a height from baseline uh, to the point where component has moved along with the solvent and you have to divide this height upon uh, the level where solvent uh, is rise okay so if the heights of these two spots are the same as for the components of a mixture then this is a positive result but if the heights are not same as you can see in this so you will conclude that the claim of scientist is not valid and actually this orange drink does not contain any of the artificial colors uh, like e110 or e129 okay now let's have a look over the detailed procedure uh, for this experiment use pencil to draw a baseline on chromatography paper this is first point and second apply the samples of orange drink and other two artificial colors at different spots on the baseline number three dip this paper in solvent such that baseline is just above the solvent level okay so you have to care uh, take care of this that the baseline uh, should be above the solvent level so the samples should not be dissolving in solvent then number four 
allow the solvent to travel up the paper, observe the separated spots and use ruler to uh, measure heights of E colors compared to orange color. Yes, if heights are not same, then orange color does not contain artificial colors E110 and E129. So that was the complete paper. Thank you very much for watching this.